Liberia by sharing their successes, challenges, entrepreneur endeavors, and much more with the intent to inspire other upcoming change makers. The 1847 show also promotes the Liberian culture by creating a space for individuals to learn the history of our nation, to find solutions to problems that affect our country today. For this and much more, stay tuned for All Things Liberia. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome to the future with TIT. Learn with us, grow with us. We say, connect. Build, develop, and impact with a CIT. Welcome back. You're watching the 1847 show, and this is season one, episode 20, which is part of our series called Entrepreneurship Essentials. This series is dedicated to unraveling the secrets of successful entrepreneurs by sharing real stories aimed at empowering young entrepreneurs to take actionable steps to excel in the dynamic world of business. Entrepreneurship in Liberia holds immense promise, offering a pathway to economic growth, job creation, and reduce income inequality. It is a catalyst for innovation, which will help enhance our nation's resilience in a rapidly changing world. Moreover, entrepreneurship empowers individuals, attracts foreign investment, and fosters self-resilience, which positions Liberia on the path towards a brighter and more prosperous future. Our guest today is Mr. Sandy Taylor, who is a contemporary visual artist. Sandy uses his artwork as a medium to communicate his creative vision, which is deeply rooted in his cultural background and weaves a narrative of liberation and introspection and draws inspiration from African fashion, music, and various other artistic mediums. But before we start talking all things Liberia, and don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and comment on the stream to stay engaged. We're gonna welcome our guests on the screen. Hello, Mr. Taylor, how are you? Hello, I'm doing well. How are you doing today? I am fine as well. Thanks for accepting our invitation. We're glad to have you on here. It's been a long time that we wanted to bring you on the platform. Glad we finally made it before the closeout of 2023. Right. Uh, how was how it like being on the 1847 show finally? Uh, I would say I'm definitely glad to uh, make it, uh, to be on the show because obviously, you, like you mentioned, 
is something you talked to me about a while back, but I guess that was scheduled in quite a line. So you kind of had to push the day back a little bit, but I'm glad I was able to finally make it even at around the very end of the year. So yeah, I'm happy to be here. Awesome. And thanks for accepting our invitation as well. It's an honor to share your story, your uh, perseverance throughout the year. I've known you as a friend and as a fellow co-worker of Project Change and seeing you persevere and seeing the success that that has led to is an honor to share that story. And again, on this platform, we're trying to use your story to encourage other change makers as well to keep persevering in the hopes uh, with the hopes that we can help use those energy to help make Liberia a better place. So for those who don't know you, uh, Mr. Taylor, how do you describe yourself? Uh, first, first and foremost, uh, I am a Liberian. So I currently stay in the U.S. Uh, like, like, like you as well. So we all stay here in the U.S. And uh, I've been in the U.S. I've been in the U.S. for quite a while now. So I just came up to 12 years being in the U.S. Actually, December 3rd made me to, uh, sorry, 11 years. Uh, not, not, as, not as long as I, as I talk, but it has been quite a while. Um, but yeah, I'm a visual artist. Like you mentioned, I'm a visual artist and I do paintings. And it was something I started back even when I was in Liberia, but uh, moving as I grew, it's, I just, it, become, it became part of something I like to do. And over time, I just eventually turned it into something I'm seeing doing or a hobby that I'm seeing doing as a career. So yeah, I'll just describe myself as a, as a young fellow who's trying to chase his dream, pretty much. That's awesome. So the, the typical definition of an entrepreneur, someone who is chasing their dreams. <laughs> yeah, I guess you could say that, yeah. That's cool. So being an artist, my man, sometimes from, from some people is an inherent characteristics that they have, they were born with that talent and other people they have to kind of learn it and then they yeah. become great at it. So for you, uh, did you have to learn to draw or has it always been something that came as a natural talent for you? Uh, yeah, it, it, it comes naturally, but over time too, it's something that I had to dedicate time towards. And, uh, you know, having the talent is one thing, but you also have to nurture that talent into, and to get it to the level where if you're seeing yourself doing it as a career, um, you definitely have you definitely have to invest a great amount of time into it to be able to go to that next level. So I would say in order to for me to get to where I am now, it took a lot of discipline. Uh, it was a lot of long nights, and I would stay up late working on a painting or planning on my next art project, or even sometimes working on paintings that people would pay me to create for maybe their loved ones or somebody who passed away. Um, or maybe that significant other. So, yeah. And we'll talk a little bit more about all those things that you mentioned. But, you know, there's one thing to have natural talent, right? And there's another thing to not just be okay with that, but try to improve on it because there's always right. room for both. And I think from what you said is, yes, it came naturally, but over time you've prioritized developing that skill, becoming better. And one of the things that you mentioned earlier was you, you being in America for over 11 years. So yeah. transitioning into America, how has that improved? How has being in America helped you get in a better position as far as being an artist? So being here, it allowed me to have access to more opportunities. And, and also just with, within the past couple of years that I've been here, I didn't have, I didn't have access to certain opportunities I, I wish I could have. So, for example, when I graduated high school, I couldn't go to college because I didn't have my green card at the time. And I also wanted to join the military. And that was a little difficult for me. But I believe, you know, God kind of put me in that position so that way I can see, uh, I could use what I already have, which was, you know, my gift to be able to, to draw or create art. So I had way too much free time on hand. So that was when I actually started investing um, a little more time into art. So yeah, I would say that's, that's when it really started taking off for me. That's when 
you know, I started seeing a little more value in it because back then when I used to draw back in Liberia, it was just something I did for fun. Maybe I would just, I'll do some sketches back in elementary school and stuff, but what, I didn't really take it serious. It wasn't anything I was like, okay, I'm going to be doing this as a job or I'm going to be doing it as a career. So Did you ever draw people, people's homework in Liberia? Did people ever pay you to draw their homework? That people maps? didn't pay me, but people did ask me to do like sketches for them. And especially like with me being a guy, a, some of the ladies in my community that knew I draw, so you know they'll come to me, obviously. And you know, um, but yeah, it was just something. I guess it was my way of wanting to flirt with them too, because you know, when they know I can draw, <laughs> they'll try to go, they'll try to come to me. So, but yeah, pe people knew I could draw. It just, um, yeah, like I said, it was just something I did for fun. I didn't really take it serious. Okay. So you talk a, a bit about investing, but in the in the sense of time. So being yeah. in America, one thing that that has allowed you to do also when it comes to your art career is being in a position to invest into your career. You know, um, pretty yeah. much buying the necessary equipment, buying brushes to paint. So of all those investments, have you been able to break even or do you think you're still trying to uh, you're still grinding or are you making profit at this point? Because you've invested over the years, you've invested a lot into your business, yeah. into your craft. So are you at the point where it's, it's making sense that those investments that you make? Oh yeah, for sure. It's making a lot more sense. Now, I will say for sure, I still am investing. I'm definitely not in a position where I'll tell myself I can make a living off my work now. I can live, on, uh, I can make a living as an artist. I'm more so wanting to in, continue to invest to get my business to where is, is bringing in sufficient revenue to allow the business to run itself. Because that's when you know you're really in business, when your business is bringing in capital that is allowing the business to run and you don't have to like go into your bank account and say, okay, I'm going to invest three, four hundred dollars I mean, you can, but if your business brings in enough money to allow, us to allow the business to run on its own, and, you know, that's when you start to see like growth you know, kind of at a steady rate or maybe even like at a higher rate because now, you know, you're getting sales and stuff. So, but yeah, I, I do still invest into my business or take money out of my own pocket to invest into it. And yeah, I think that's going to be, that's going to continue for at least the next couple of years. Now, but does investment look different at this point in time? Uh, maybe three or four years in, does investment look different compared to when you first started? Yeah. Like for, for example, sure. are you are you investing? Maybe now you're more strategic about your investment. Maybe now you're spending more money on ads, on marketing, on uh, getting the name out there compared to before where you are investing, but you're just buying brushes and things like that to do the actual work. So does it look different? Well, because over time, my medium has changed. So medium has seen what I use to create the art. So when it started out more with drawings, uh, sketches or uh, using pencil to create the art and and then i got into digital art so digital art i use the apple pencil and i use the ipad and i could also use like a typical computer to create digital art or whatnot but as far as the tools that i'm using so it just depends on the type of work i'm creating and i've, and I've also started experimenting with white paintings I wouldn't necessarily say experimenting, but it's just more so just um, kind of extending my the mediums I, I'm using to create art or the materials I'm using. So it just depends on the projects that I'm working on. But yeah, I will say now I, I invest a little bit more into the tools that I'm using to create art. I mean, I hope that answered your question. Yeah, to an extent, but I'll, I'll fall back on a, a little bit on the original question, which was, Based on the investments that you've made, uh, have you been able to break even, make some profit, or maybe you're still grinding? You feel like you got to invest the next few years to still grind to get you to that point where you're breaking even, where maybe you might not be making profits, but whatever you're putting in, you're getting it out, and you're coming out to maybe net zero. Yeah, I'm definitely not coming up to net zero because if I'm really trying to break, I just look at it this way, you know, whatever money, let's say, let's say the business made, $5,000 this year, 
I'm pretty much investing all that back into the business, whether that's like applying for new art shows, because that was what I did, did, did the most this year that brought in revenue from my business. I went to art shows and that allowed me to sell artworks. Um, and in other ways, I make art, I make money to the business is by people paying me to do work for them. So if they want me to do a custom painting, um, you know, I was charging a, a certain amount. And then, you know, whatever money I make from that, I just invest that back into the business, whether that's like buying newer art. And, and also just to be clear, as far as when I mentioned digital art, because I do the di because I do the art on the iPad, it's it's a digital file. It's not a physical thing that you can hold. So it's similar to you having taking a picture on your phone, and the the picture you have is a digital file that like you can send that to anybody. But if that person wants to have a physical copy of the picture you took on your phone, they have to print it out. So those those are the areas where I have to invest money as far as ordering like a physical copy of the artwork so that could be printed out on uh, on a print or it could also be printed out on a canvas so mostly pretty much just wall decor it could, it could, it could be, be printed out on different types of materials that you could use to put on your wall so yeah i'm definitely not breaking even because Every time the business makes money, I'm investing it into the business as well. Um, and that's also because I'm really like, it goes back to what I said earlier. I'm not using the business as a means of making a living now, since I have a job outside of the work I do as an artist. And I'm just pretty much trying to get the business to grow. So the most simple terms I can, I can, I, I can describe it as you got to look at a business as a young baby. So when a baby is young, the baby can't really do much for itself. It's like you gotta you gotta nurture that baby and continue to like buy buy baby diapers or whatnot. But once your child grow up to a, a, a level or age where they can work and make their own money, so it's like now that child starts taking care of themselves. So that's kind of like how you have to look at it. And then they even they even start taking care of you when you get older. You yeah, know? yeah, eventually too. Yeah, your child can take care of you as well. That's that's awesome, and I think well, that's I cool. actually learned that from Elon Musk, the um, Tesla CEO and SpaceX. Awesome, awesome. I, I I definitely understand and I agree with that. So let's talk a little bit. You mentioned uh, you also have a full time job. So besides being an artist, like you said, you're working. Something that we can also talk about is your big brother. You know, you have a lot of siblings that look up to you. Kind of you play a fatherly a fatherly role in a sense, and then you also have school that you're trying to do. So a whole lot of things that are asking for your time, asking for your attention. How are you able to juggle all of those things? Yeah, I think uh, it definitely has a lot to do with uh, work-life balance because if, it's some, if being an artist is something that I desire deeply, I think I always make time for it. You know, anything that we wanted to achieve in our life, we'll find whatever means to make time for it. You know, that can even be, it's like similar to, you know, as a guy, be trying to to get with a young lady, you know, you're going to, you're going to make time for her somehow. So, you know, because that desire is just there. So, you know, with me and artists like that, um, I'll always make time for it. But as far as like, have as far as having a work-life balance, I just try to free up time in my schedule as much as I can. So, don't really go out much. I don't like it's usually my schedule is usually just work, I come home, and uh, whatever time I have left in the day, in the day, I try to kind of divide that up between you know getting work, getting work done, whether that's art related or getting some school work done. And I'm, I'm always tracking my time as well, so as far so maybe I'll tell myself, okay, I'm gonna spend two or three hours towards art and then. The remaining three, three or so hours that I have left in the day before I go to sleep, I'm going to put that towards school. So just I'm just mindful of how I use my time and what I'm spending my time on. So, yeah, it kind of allows me to get work done in a more efficient way. OK, so now let's talk a little bit about the other thing that's asking for your time. That's your school. 
but your school also is kind of a little different from what it is that you're doing and you, know, you want to do as your full-time career. So you study IT and then you're also, you know, doing art. So why, why, why is there a difference there? Why, what, you know, where did the interest of IT came from? Yeah, so with IT, uh, I've always been into technology. I've always been interested. So I've been growing up in Liberia. Uh, so a fun story, a friend of mine, we grew up together and he and I, we used to like create those little lighting where you use the bamboo and you kind of cut it up. Maybe you probably saw that growing up too. And then you open up the, you open up the spacing within the bamboo you pretty much cut it up and you use battery and wires and lighting. So usually it's a science project. So that's where I guess I started learning it from where they're teaching uh, about electricity and, you know, positive and negative pull and all that. So my friend and I, we actually, we, we actually, it was something we used to just do for fun growing up. So fast forward now, Maybe those things we're doing back then we thought it was just fun or which it was fun, but I feel like in a way we're kind of planting a seed in us that as we grew and as we as we got older, you realize it's something that we're interested in. So right now he works for uh, like he works for LEC in in Liberia. So he's he's one of the guys you know, who going up the light pool and fixing the light. So sometimes when I when I think about it, I'm just like, wow, even though this, those are things we're doing back then, but he's actually doing it as a job right now in Liberia. And, you know, I'm over here pursuing uh, IT. But, yeah, to go back to your question, I've always been interested in uh, technology. Um, it, technology and art had, had a lot. They have, they have a lot in common. So with technology, it has a lot to do with innovation and uh, creativity. And, you know, and with art as a whole, it has everything to do with creativity and um, kind of just digging deep into, you know, like emotions and feeling. And, and technology, when you look at it nowadays, it's like uh, we're, we're really connected to it in a way. You know, technology is used to connect all of us. It's because of technology right now, we're able to have this uh, live interview so yeah, it's something I've just always been interested in growing up. That's awesome. And then good on you too, to not only have that interest, but to try to turn it into a professional career as well and, and yeah. be a candidate for it. So uh, I know you've been in school now and you know, you've been consistent, so keep going and hopefully it will lead to something fruitful for you. But excellent, excellent. Now let's talk a little bit about, you know, just your brand, the Sandy Arts and Merchandise. So tell us, uh, in the name is arts and merchandise. So are those two things interwoven or is it that um, the arts that you make, you turn it into a merchandise or do you create specific art for your merchandise? Yeah, I think when I, when I, when I created the, the name of the company or the branding, Sandy's Art and Merchandise, before it used to be called Sandy's Art Gallery. But then I was thinking long term, for the business, okay, what do I what do I see my business looking like within the next five, 10 years? And I know being an artist now in this day and age is a lot different from an artist 100 years ago, back maybe back in the 90s or back in the early 90s or in the 1800s. It's a lot different because art has, art has kind of evolved and and artists now pretty much, if they're trying to make a business around their work or potentially do it full time and make a living off of it, they kind of have to be innovative and find other ways to be able to sell their work or, or find different avenues to allow people to have access to their work. So with me adding merchandise is just because I know I'll see my work being used in other ways. So with me, let's say I create a digital painting, or I create a painting and I want a picture of that painting, let's say to be uh, like a blanket or a comforter or some type of merchandise that I'll eventually want to have on my website. 
I kind of wanted to offer in the category as a merchandise goods as well, because with Facebook market, because I have a business page for, for my business and it's out of merchandise. When you're setting up a product through Facebook, they kind of consider your product as a merchandise. So yeah, I think my reason, the reason for me in naming this and out of merchandise is because I was thinking long term and I know I will eventually end up adding other types of product within my line of product. It wouldn't be just wall art. So it could be like rocks so or custom made rocks, or it could be sculptures. And they all just kind of fall in the category as a merchandise goods. Makes sense. So do you sometimes just make art specifically to sell only as merchandise and not as wall art? Um, as far as me making it I'm going to sell, uh, well, it just depends. Sometimes I'll make art that I'm not necessarily going to sell or, you know, I want to sell it to a specific person. So, for example, I have an Oprah painting that I did and my goal is to sell it to Oprah. Mm-hmm. So that that is not necessarily like the average, the average painting I would make. The average painting I would make to want to sell to anyone who just want to buy art from me and that's because i was more intentional with that work when i did it so you know take for example if i do a painting of george weir you know my goal would be to sell the george weir because i want that work to gain more value i want to work to gain exposure so i mean maybe if somebody wants to buy i could sell a print of it but it wouldn't be the original it would be like a limited edition print so yeah there are some work that are a lot more exclusive that i wouldn't just sell because you know i want to make money from it so with the oprah painting i've taken it to two art shows and people they asked me if it was for sale and i told them no it's not for sale it's just for um exposure for people to see the work Got it. Um, but but yeah eventually with some of my work i wanted to end up in a museum where it is just on display because also as the artists grow, the one that work to become a little more valuable or the, the one that work to be seen by more people. So yeah, there'll be some work I have that I probably wouldn't be selling. Got you. So for now you do both work for commission and then you also do work where, you know, you create your own art and then you sell it. So which, what is the most expensive art to, to to a date that you've done either for commission or for just you created and then someone bought it. If you, if you want to disclose that information, just the most expensive item. Uh, as far as uh, price wise, I mean, I've, I've done commissions that have been in the hundreds of dollars. I don't think I've done a commission for anyone that I charge over a thousand dollars or so. And um, as far as commission and the uh, work that I sell, maybe I would say the Oprah painting, if I were to sell, it will be the, the, the highest price painting that I'm going to sell. And that's just because it also, it co- cost me a lot of money to make it. Like just making the art alone, it cost me almost $600. Because it's a big art, it's a big painting. I don't, I don't know if you're getting the chance to see it. So. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so so I pretty much created the art using three materials. So I use a canvas, well, more than three materials. Now I use a canvas. I use oil painting, and usually with oil painting, they're they're better quality compared to me doing digital and then it just printed out on a on a regular canvas. Um, so oil painting lasts really long. So take for example the Mona Lisa painting in. Uh, in France, I believe, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think they have it in the gallery in France. So the Mona Lisa painting is a very old painting, but it, it has still maintained the value over over hundreds of years now. I, I don't really remember exactly what year it was created, but I know it was created just sometimes in the 1800. And yeah, so artists sometimes use certain type of materials because the the one the paint the one that worked to last longer and it also gives the work um certain type of value or 
uh, in in essence, now it makes it either a little more expensive than what they typically what what they usually create. So yeah, the Oprah painting would probably be my most expensive painting if I would put it up for sale. Okay, uh, so for ones that you've sold, would you would you mind sharing that as well? The ones that you've sold, what do you what is the highest item, the price items that you've sold to date? Would you? I mean, to it, go, it goes back to what I said earlier. As mm -hmm. far as me selling. The price could range anywhere between 150 to like over $200. But at my most, the most I've gotten paid for a paint, a paint or it was actually a drawing, was a commission piece. So I make more money on doing work for people. So people pay me to create an art for them. Then I've made selling like copies of my work or original painting. I do have original paintings up for sale. I have a painting that is going for um, $7,800, but that painting hasn't been sold yet. So, so maybe if, if that, once that painting gets sold, that would be the, the highest price painting that, I'll, that maybe I would say I have sold to date, but I still have it. Um, I probably need to update it on my website because I'm currently working on translating my website to a new platform. So once I have that ready, then I will upload some of my original paintings up for sale. And, and you might ask why, why would I price it that high? And that's because with original paintings that I don't have copies of, and also it depends the size of the work. So it's a bigger painting too. And yeah, that's that's the reason why why I would price some of them high because the time it took me to create it, um, the exclusivity of the work, and just the material I use to create the work as well. So that's pretty much how artists price that work sometimes. Got it. So it's an oil based paint as well, oil based. Yeah, it's an oil based paint. Makes sense. Makes sense. Awesome. Um, so now I want to show your um, Oprah painting that we're talking about so people can have an idea. It's going to be on the screen there. Yeah. So, so, so fun fact, that's not what it looks like now. I actually have it framed. So it's framed in this like golden frame. And I have it somewhere on my Instagram. So I had an art show in Kentucky where I currently live. And I had it. I had it on display at the show. There's a video of it on, on an Instagram reel. Yeah. Awesome. Like, so how long did it take you to create this? So the Oprah painting took me. I know I did it in 2021. I worked on it for about a month or so, but maybe up to two months. But because I because I have full time job, so usually I would spend on average about three hours or so. And I wouldn't work on it every day. So maybe within a week, I might work on it for about maybe about 10 to 11 hours in a week. So over time, I would say maybe that painting took me maybe close to 30 hours to create. So yeah, some yeah, so that would just be equivalent to a little over a day. So about a day and yeah, a day and working, yeah. working nonstop for a day. Yeah, yeah. So it would be equivalent to that. And that's because we're, so with oil painting, creating an oil painting, the technique is different or how artists create painting using oil is different or using oil painting is different because they have to work in layers. So I work in layers. So if I apply paint on the canvas, I'll have to come back maybe within the next few hours because it has to dry it a little bit for me to be able to continue to paint or else it just look like mud. That's because all the paints start mixing within each other. See, so for like any ladies watching this video, it's similar to how a lady will put that makeup on. They kind of work in layers to add the foundation, and then you know they keep going over it. So it's similar to that. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. So we're at the midway point. We're gonna take a little short break here, and then we'll be right back. But before we go, do you have anything else you would like to add that's relevant to the conversation now? I'll just say, well. Thanks to everyone for tuning in. And uh, yeah, we'll be back for the break. Awesome, awesome. Stay tuned, guys. Thank you. Hello, my name is Grace 
Choma Baba, and the Gazo Destiny Percy Organization, and Uno and Julie's Snacks. You are watching the 1847 show. The 1847 show celebrates you, me, and all things like you. Follow the 1847 show on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. The 1847 show, all things like you. Welcome to the future with TIT. Learn with us, grow with us. We say, connect. Build, develop, and impact with us, TIT. Welcome back, welcome back. So yes, so for those of you that are watching, you're watching the 1847 show and this is our 20th episode on the series called Entrepreneurship Essentials. So Mr. Taylor, welcome back. How is this so far? Yeah, I'm liking it, I'm liking it so far. I mean, the commercial seems impressive. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Okay. Awesome, yeah, we're just here to promote all things Liberian. And those are entrepreneurs like yourself who has sent us their work and trying to promote it. So um, going into a little bit, stepping aside for a bit, let's talk a little bit about AI and what that could mean for the, you know, because you are not only an art person, but you also like technology. So with the introduction of AI and how we can generate images by describing them, how does that affect the work of artists like yourself? Uh, I mean, it's not something I've really been paying attention to. I mean, I've read a few articles about it and seen a, a few videos on it on YouTube. As far as it's, at the moment, it's not affecting my work because uh, at the end of the day, from what I've learned, AI, the AI is actually using data that is collected from other artists or just images that is... In, in a database on the internet. So that's where these websites that has AI too, that's what that's what they're using to be able to generate um, an AI image. So, I mean, it's kind of awkward in a way because there's some AI images that are generated and then they have artist signature on it. So, I mean, in a way it, it might affect artists work down the road but I think as an artist, that wouldn't allow me, that wouldn't stop me from continuing my my uh, my process as an artist or continuing my career. Because, I mean, just because, because if you think about it before, before camera came around, 
mm -hmm. artists but artists were like the camera because artists used to get paid to do portraits for people that's because camera cameras weren't around but just because cameras came around that didn't take artists out of business mm -hmm. <laughs> so in a way artists will actually be using ai to generate things so i've used ai to be able to generate some tests of uh, some some uh some tags that I'm doing. So for example, I would use AI sometimes for some writing. So if I'm writing an email, let's say I'm writing a business email and and I want and I want the email to have a professional tone or just be tweaking a way where it sounds a little bit more professional or maybe change some of the wording. I could I could type up whatever it is that I'm writing, use it on chat GPT and it will rewrite that for me. And then I can go back on it and maybe make some adjustment before I send it out. So I think eventually artists will kind of adapt to the AI too as well. It just is up to that artist if they'll want to use that too to make that work better or maybe use it to, I guess, claim they're creating the art, but instead of using the AI. So yeah, I mean, it's not it's not really going to affect me. I think for the long run, I would hope that it just helped me maybe make my work easier. I will, rather have an AI send um, email to my customers and that was just free off time in my schedule to create paintings you know <laughs> right, right so yeah. for you you're seeing it from the perspective as it's just an additional tool that can make life easier for you whereas yeah. other people could see it as a potential competitor yeah I, do, I see it as a tool because you got to think about it. AI, AI has been around for a while it's just it has just gotten a little more advanced. So with the keyboard we have on our smartphones and a computer, every time you type and and whatever you type, let's say you spell you spell a, a word wrong, the computer will actually tell you to you know it'll, it'll give you suggestions on on the correct the correct pronunciation or the correct word um, for you to kind of change it to to fix your grammatical error. So it has, it has been around for a while. It just, it has just gotten better within the past year or so. And there are neural models of the AI coming. So, and more people are just being aware of it, but it's been around for a while. For sure, for sure. Awesome, so let's take a step back a little bit. You started off, you know, with pencil, like you said, in Liberia, and also a little bit in America as well, before you transitioned to, you know, digital art. So how challenging was that transition, going from the manual way to draw to now digitally? What did you have to relearn? Uh, as far as the, the transition wasn't wasn't challenging or it wasn't difficult in any way. Um, it's just with the tools. It just um, I had to. It just took it took time for me to adjust as far as. So with with pencil, when I'm creating with pencil, I can. So it's similar to when you type in on a keyboard. When we type in, let's say in Microsoft Word, you can undo whatever it is that you type, so you can go back. Mm -hmm. So on the iPad, it's just like that. So with with the two I use, I can undo some of the brush strokes or whatever it is I painted. So if I paint it for 45 minutes straight, nonstop. There's a tool within the app that allows me to go back. So if I mess up, it allows me to go back to fix whatever it is that I messed up on. But it, the difference with that, if I was doing that on a piece of paper and using pencil, I'm not going to be able to go back. I mean, I could erase it and maybe end up drawing whatever it is I was drawing, draw that all over it again. But with with digital. Um, I can do that with, with a regular traditional drawing. I can't do it. But up to now, I still do draw using traditional pencil. So if I if I have a project I'm working on, if I have an idea of a painting I want to do, maybe if I'm not if I'm not home, let's say I'm out and about, but I have a piece of paper. I have a paper and a pencil with me or a pen. I could sketch out the idea or sometimes just write it down. Sometimes it's usually just a phrase. I would just write it down. And when I come home, I kind of try to get that out of my head and turn it into like an actual maybe painting or something I was thinking about. 
so I still do use traditional drawing tools or art tools. It's just now that I'm doing digital painting, digital painting allows me to work faster. And so I can pretty much take my entire tool with me. I even have my app out right here. So that's just, that's it right here. So I would just I can pretty much take this whole thing with me, let's say on a flight. And it's a whole studio by itself. So, so in a way, I think by using digital painting, it has, give, it has given me a lot of advantage over using traditional tools to create art. Would you say you love the digital painting better than in that case? Yeah, I would say because I've gotten used to it. Um, this this doesn't necessarily mean I don't like drawing with pencil either. It's just it allows me to work more efficiently since I don't have all the time in the world to actually sit and create art for eight, nine hours straight. I mean, days that I don't have work or if I don't have school, a lot of school work to do, I could probably do art for longer hours. But nowadays, I only have so much time on my hands. So whatever tool that is allowing me to create art efficiently, that is what I'm going to use more of. Makes sense. Absolutely. So recently you got interviewed by a local TV station in Kentucky, uh, yeah. WDRB. And I want you to tell us how big of an exposure did that bring to your brand? Yeah, it was uh, surprisingly. <laughs> so when that happened, uh, it was at an art show I, I attended here in Kentucky. And when that interview happened later on that day, people were coming to the show like, I saw you on TV and this other lady, <laughs> this lady came up to me. She was like, when I saw you on TV, I told myself, I have to come find you. <laughs> so I, she was like, she glad you found me that day. Um, yeah, it was nice. I will say that for sure. You know, it was nice to be able to give some of my artworks exposure that they didn't have, even the Oprah painting. So even the guy who was interviewing me, he kept asking me, so has Oprah seen her painting? I was like, no. I told him no. And he was telling me, I think there was some website or some, because she has a lot of businesses. So one of her business, he mentioned that, I guess I should do a post on there or something, and she might be able to see it. So yeah, I think it was nice that I had that experience because it allowed me to get a little more it brought me out of my comfort zone a little bit. So just to maybe hopefully prepare me for, you know, all the opportunities that I might have. So, you know, if I ever were to be on TV again, I would just be like, oh, I've done this before. So I don't have to be, I don't have to be too nervous or something. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, but it was, it was nice. Awesome. So did you, I guess you felt like a celebrity in that moment, right? <laughs> Not necessarily, because I also make YouTube videos, and when I make YouTube videos, I put it out there. I don't know how many people are going to see it. So I'm already used to being in front of camera. It's just most so, I, I never had that experience prior to that, so I didn't know how it was going to turn out. So I just, uh, I just went up with my best, I put my best foot forward to, to pretty much, uh, just show what I had to offer in a way. So I didn't really, no, I didn't really feel like a celebrity. Just, I was just glad I had the opportunity to show my work. And it wasn't a long interview. Maybe the video I posted on social media, it was actually a short clip I posted of it, but the interview itself was probably less than five minutes. It wasn't that long. Copy. That's five, that's five uh, valuable minutes though that you're gonna keep. Yeah, forever. I mean, it's, some, it's definitely, something I can put in my portfolio to show the gallery if I'm trying to, you know, work with bigger, bigger uh, businesses that are in the industry. But honestly, my long term is to be a more independent artist where I own, I own access to everything that, that I'm putting out there. So what is that? The art show or the, 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 the space I'm showing my work in. That's just because I mean, having, middleman within the mix of what you're trying to do. I mean, I'm definitely not saying I wouldn't need help. You know, I think I always I always need help from people who who's already people who has already gone before me. 
I think I always see I always seek some type of advice, but my long term goal is to be a more independent artist. So um, I can I'm, I'm able to own everything that I'm putting out there. Okay. So also you attended the the Black Boy Art Show uh, festival, and how through that experience, how were you able to meet other artists, and how valuable is that in the industry where it seems like a lot of the work you do is just individual based. Why is it important to go out there to those events and network with other artists? Right. So exactly what we just mentioned, networking. So me, for me to be able to meet other artists and meet other people in the industry, I learn from them. And we both learn from each other as well to, you know, other artists were asking, where do I order some of my art prints? to to be able to to sell them how much i how much i spend on ordering my prints and and stuff like that so yeah like you mentioned it definitely helps with networking and it gets me to be comfortable a little bit more than you know just sitting in my little in my own little world and creating art and i think at the end of the day every artist depending on whatever artist uh that whatever artist the person is so musical artist or a writer or a visual artist they want to be able to share that, that work with the world i think most artists they don't want to you know be gone god forbid they're they're no longer around before you know the world cares about what it what it is that they have to offer because i think at the end of the day artists want that work to be able to inspire other people and also make an impact in the world they're living right so I won't be able to do that if I'm not getting out, if I'm not putting my work out. Because surprisingly, I would say this year was the, the year that I really saw my art, like people being inspired by the work that I do. Even though a few people follow me on social media, and you know, maybe they'll comment on some of the work I'll post, whether that's video or, or a regular Instagram post. But being able to, for someone to purchase an art from me, and I can see the emotions on that face. They're excited. Like there was this one lady, she purchased her artwork from me at a, the Black Boys Art Show in Chicago back in May. And she was so excited when she was like, this is my first like real art purchase. And I'm, I'm so happy. <laughs> she chose the right person to buy it from her, man. <laughs> yeah, so um, I was, yeah, I was, that, that really kind of melted my heart. I was like, wow, um, I didn't know because some of this work I created, I didn't actually create the, the seller. So the paintings you bought, it was a painting I did back in, it was, it was one of my earlier digital paintings. I think I actually started the painting in 2019, I finished it in 2020. But it's, it's one of my older paintings, but um, it's one of my most purchased paintings too. And it's one of my most liked paintings. So when I have it, when I have it at an art show, people will always ask me like, well, what would inspire me and they'll ask me okay is this your favorite painting and i would tell them yeah yes yeah, probably one of my favorite too um so the, the work i'm talking about is titled self-conscious it's on my instagram yeah. um so we're going to show a few of your your artwork here and then you will allow you to talk about give us the name of them and then also you can talk about the you know briefly the inspiration behind them so the first one yeah. we'll show here is uh one of your most recent one I believe this is called the vessel. Uh, yeah. Yes. So, just with what that, was the inspiration behind this one? Right. So, with that piece, I would say it's a little more of a religious painting because I also have some some uh, passage I had explaining a little more about the painting. Because sometimes when I post a painting on my Instagram, I don't really go into detail with the inspiration behind it or or you know what what led to me creating the painting. So with the painting, the, the subject in it, which is a male figure, that's that's what's representing the vessel, or that's the vessel. When I initially started working on it, I wanted to have an actual vessel, so like a shipwreck or some type of vessel. But I had a shipwreck, which was from the, the reference I was using to create a painting. So when we put the painting back up, uh, there's so there's a part right here at the very uh where in the silhouette what looks like a little like little light so that's that's pretty much uh like waves in the water 
So like I was saying, I, was, I thought about putting a shipwreck or a ship within the, within the wave so it, it represents the vessel. But then I realized, I was like, okay, hold on. We are also a vessel as well. So, and where I went into a little more detail was I mentioned the, the Bible about Mary being a vessel. So God used Mary as a vessel to be able to bring Jesus Christ into the world. So in essence, with us being a vessel, it just shows that we all have some type of role to play in society. So you got to think about it like a train. So with train, you know, there are, there are a lot of different boxes with on the train, but in a way they're all connected. Right. But then a box in a way is also like a vessel because when you go on Google and you type in a vessel, it's usually something that holds something, uh, holds, it holds some form of substance or value. So with human beings, like, there's a reason, you know, God brought us here and, you know, God also used us as a vessel. So God used us to be able to reach other people or be able to deliver some type of message through us to the world. Okay. So in the world, in, 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 in essence, so we're all, you know, well, we're all vessels in a way. And, and yeah, we're, we're, we're in the world to, you know, kind of, I guess, help out each other. Right. Because we're, we're all doing something. For mm -hmm. sure. That's a powerful message for sure. How about this one? Yeah, so that piece, I was pretty much experimenting with colors. Jordan 23, I believe is what it's called, Jordan 23. Yeah, it's got it's titled Joining Twenty Three. So I experimented with colors. So lately, I've been been into abstract painting. So for anyone who's not familiar with the term abstract, it's pretty much just uh, shapes, something that is just made out of. Uh, I don't want to say it's not necessarily random, but it's up to the viewer to interpret it for whatever they see it to be. Uh, so artists will usually use abstract to be able to be able to to try to reveal some type of you know emotions or some type of mood because with abstract you know the artist could go anywhere. I could use just colors to create abstract. I could use shape. So with the Michael Jordan painting you see there, I was like, I was playing around with colors and shapes as well. So yeah, and I wanted to give it like a pop, I wanted to give it a pop art type of vibe. So pop art is usually art that has bright colors and like shapes, bright shapes that are just kind of like in your face. That's that's why it's called pop art because it's just in your face. For sure, for sure. How about this one? You know, we saw the red, white, and blue in this and we had to include it. So tell us a little bit about the inspiration behind this one, the name of it and then the inspiration behind it. Yeah, so that piece is titled Liberty. So I've done this thing where maybe it was only last year that I didn't do it. But for the past two years or so, I'll always try to do a, a painting that is specifically, that's kind of catered towards Liberia's Independence Day. So it's more like a July 26th special. <laughs> so with that piece, so the story behind it, you won't believe I actually did that painting in maybe I would say less than 48 hours. So Independence Day this year, I believe was on a Wednesday, right? Mm, I'm not, I can't remember. Yeah, yeah I, I think I I know it was, it was, it was yeah, weird. It, 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 was some, it was one of those days during the way, it was either Tuesday or Wednesday. But I had to get the painting done before the Independence Day. And that weekend, uh, LIB Positive had reached out to me to give me a shout out. And then I was like, oh, but there's this painting I'm working on. There's a painting I want to do for the July 26th celebration, but it's not ready yet. So I want you all to use that painting. So they're like, okay. So, and this is a big Instagram page. This is like one of the biggest exactly. Liberia Instagrams page. So I was like, man, if they had reached out to me and I told them I have a special painting and it's not ready yet, I'm going to be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you got your reputation on the line, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, either way, they probably would have used one of my work I already have. If I if I if I end up if I ended up not getting it ready, but yeah, I was able to 
painted within because it, and because I do it digital too, so with digital I'm much faster. So I was able to get it ready right before the Independence Day for them to uh, post it on Instagram. That's awesome. So we're coming pretty close to the end time here. We want to talk a little bit about, you know, tell the audience, you know, how they can follow your brand and uh, how they can purchase your items. And, uh, and we'll give you the floor to, you know, to give your last message to the audience here. But just a little bit about your brand first. How can people purchase your products? Yeah, so with Sandy's Art and Merchandise, uh, my the the domain for my website is Sandy's Art Shop. So Sandy S A N D Y with an S after the Y. Sandy's Art A R T dot shop. So not, not dot com. You have to use dot shop. So when you type when they use dot com, they won't be able to find it. So it's dot shop after the Sandy's Art. So we have it right here. If you scan this QR code, it will take you directly to the website. So if you just scan that, it will take you to the website directly and you don't have to type it in. Um, but go ahead. Yeah, so the the link to my website is Sandy's Art that Shop. And yeah, I have some of my works on there. I don't have all of them. I do have some work that I'm working on putting up on my website soon. And yeah, I have prints there and I have frame art as well so yeah that's where people can find my work and for as far as my social media is sandy the liberian so sandy underscore there and then underscore liberian because um, instagram wouldn't allow me allow me to put space so i so i have to use like a underscore but yeah sandy the liberian and uh yeah that's my instagram handle that's also on the screen here as well. So if you can see that, you guys can copy that. And that's on Instagram, you said, right? Yep. Yep. Now I want to give you the floor to just speak to the audience, thinking about your young self, the young version of yourself, and looking at how far you've come. What message do you have to any maybe potential artists that are aspiring to do the work that you do? What advice would you give them? Yeah, I would definitely say... Just do what you're passionate about. And you know, at the end of the day, you want to be happy creating art. You want to, yeah, you want to be happy creating art as an artist. Uh, eventually, you'll find maybe your style of work because I'm still in that process of finding the style of work that I like to do the most. And you know, as artists, we, con we also continue to evolve. And as we, we become more innovative and as we grow and we, we start experimenting with new tools to create art. So now, with me now, there are other types of medium I haven't used or there are other types of tools I haven't used to create art. So sculptures, I want to get into a little bit of sculpturing. So yeah, just kind of allow yourself to um, explore because art is not like structured to say, okay, you need to do this and you do only this for the rest of your life so you take for example there are some artists who they make music and you know they're a writer they're they're movies that they're, they're actresses and actors that make movies and so you just kind of allow yourself to have that freedom to be able to you know just learn and and, and pull out your pull out whatever you have into you know into the world you live in because you never know who that's going to that I, I didn't know my work was going to inspire people or my work was going to connect with people until, you know, I kind of started getting myself out there and don't be afraid to kind of get yourself out to it, get out of your comfort zone a little bit because becoming successful is, is not the most comfortable thing. Amen. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you look back and you're like, okay, it was totally worth it. I mean, uh, at least I tried. Maybe I feel a couple of the times, but you know, I didn't die. It just right. kind of helped me. It just kind of helped me to become better. I mean, you could probably attest to this that you know there are a lot of things that you probably tried and it didn't work. But I remember you telling me about this show, and then I was just like, "Yeah, man, I'll be looking forward to the 1840." That was before you even made the first episode. Yeah. You know, you you shared with me, and I was I believed in what you were talking about, and I was looking forward to it. So, and here we are today now on the 20th episode. You said. 
20th episode yeah yeah so yeah i mean if anybody watching watching this out there you know just believe in whatever it is that you're wanting to achieve awesome now uh just some last words again if you have anything else that maybe you wanted to talk about that we didn't get to talk about you know you can you can finish up here for sure uh, i mean i would say you know, I would hope one day that I can own maybe like a gallery in Liberia or something, or be able to work with other artists in Liberia to create art that is really kind of art that is curated to the Liberian culture or or make some I have some type of impact within the Liberian culture. Because sometimes I think about it. So the last time I was in Liberia was last year, and our airport doesn't necessarily have any type of um art that is really kind of welcome people into the country right. so you know projects like that you know i want to like i wouldn't mind investing in so way to be able to work with other artists to create something that people come into liberia because art can art can have such a big impact in a way because artists are able to see things in a different way than what a regular person would see so you know yeah i would hope that you know one day i'm able to work on bigger projects within Liberia, you know, at least that will also allow me to come home and spend some time there and do something that I would take pride in and I'll be excited doing. So, yeah. That's a big, that's a big one, my man. And it makes so much sense. And I think there's many other ways you can use that. And coming from you, I'm not surprised because as an artist, you know, you guys are naturally creative, but that is such a, a brilliant idea. Yeah, I mean, and it's not only on the airport alone, just in Liberia in general, because when I was there at the Ronnie Bauman Point Hotel, I saw a lot of great artworks and a lot of great artists showcasing that work. But imagine some of the work being in, you know, airports or hotels where people can see them because those are where, you know, people who are coming to Liberia, that's where they're going, you know, and if they can see those work or have access to them, they'll be able to invest into those artists as well. So yeah i mean i hope one day i'm able to work with other artists there and we're able to work together to kind of showcase what Liberia has to offer awesome my man well thank you that's pretty much all we have again thanks for the time thanks for being on time for the interview and then for those of you that are watching you've been watching the 1847 show i've been your host prince larmy jarbo and this was season one episode 20 which is part of our series called entrepreneurship essentials this series is dedicated to unraveling the secrets of successful entrepreneurs like the individual we just interviewed by sharing real stories aimed at empowering other entrepreneurs. To watch upcoming episodes, please don't forget to follow the show. Until next time, God bless you and God bless Mama Liberia. <laughs>